OK, then. Chris's first question. Which piece of cutlery is most commonly used to make the oval-shaped food presentation known as a quenelle, knife, fork or spoon? Which piece of cutlery is most commonly used to make the oval-shaped food presentation known as a quenelle, Q-U-E-N-E-L-L-E? -L -L -E? Yes, they're little things about the same shape of a rugby ball. You mould them between two spoons, so it's a spoon. It's the right answer, Chris. And mm. I mean, what, what do you put in it? What are you, what are you moulding? What are the Anything. ingredients? Anything. Potato. Uh, the usual classic thing is quenelle of pike. But uh, well, I've never done that, of course. But yeah. Yeah, you can mould anything between two spoons to make a quenelle. I'm taking it all back. You'd <laughs> never hear that from Kevin. Extra background. OK, well, well done. One to you. And uh, Jane, your first question. What terms are used to describe the two types of meat within a crab? Granular and smooth, chunky and fine, or brown and white. What terms are used to describe the two types of meat within a crab? I don't know. I have actually eaten crab, but um, I'll go for brown and white. Brown and white. Right to do so. Correct answer. Oh, well done, Jamie. Well one. Chris, what's the name of the green shoot similar in appearance to samphire that's grown in Tuscany and is only in season for about five weeks of the year? Is it monk's beard, angel's hair or god's dust? What's the name of the green shoot similar in appearance to samphire that's grown in Tuscany and is only in season for about five weeks of the year? This is awkward. I mean, god's dust sounds like something out of 70s counterculture, so we'll... Uh... Discount that. Monk's beard, angel's hair. Mm. Well, given the Italian predilection for sort of hyperbole, I'll say angel's hair. Angel's hair for this um, mm. Tuscan samphire. Um, it's not, Chris, mm. reasonable answer. Um, and it's not God's dust, it is monk's beard. OK, Jane, well, that's what you hope for. Putting Chris in, he'd get one wrong, and he has. So a chance for the lead here. What two-word French phrase refers to the practice of buying wines before they're bottled and released onto the market? Is it en couture, en primeur, or en raison? What two-word French phrase refers to the practice of buying wines before they're bottled and released onto the market? Good grief. I know even less about wine than cooking. I don't drink either. Um, uh, I'll go for the raison one. Whatever it is. En raison? Yeah. Uh, the old Judith tactic there. <laughs> um, no, it's not. It's not. Chris? En primeur. En primeur. So, all square. Not much harm done there at all, James. Still wide open. And Chris, the pomegranate is believed to be native to a region that is part of which country? Iran, China or Indonesia? The pomegranate is believed to be native to a region that's part of which country? He. Well, there's some link to the Garden of Eden, isn't there? Uh, which is believed to have been sort of um, Middle East. Don't think it'd be China, certainly not Indonesia, so I'll go with Iran. OK, Iran. What do you think, other eggheads? I think it's right. I think that's right. Yep, you are right, Chris. Well worked out. So two to you, and Jane, that means no safety net here. You must get this. Jira, J-E-E-R-A. Jira, often used in Indian cuisine, is another name for which spice? Is it saffron, turmeric or cumin? Jira, often used in Indian cuisine, is another name for which spice? I, I'll go for saffron. OK, saffron or jira, it is cumin. Mm. It is cumin. What's down the right there? <laughs> cumin, uh, jira. Which means, after a promising uh, opening and Chris getting that second one wrong, it's uh, gone against you. It means Chris has taken that round. No place in the final round, Jane. Would you both please come back and join your teams? So, this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Carol, Dave, Laura and Jane from Amalgamation, would you leave the studio, please? 
So, John, amalgamation no more by uh, accident or design. It's, uh, it's all decoupled there. I think it was accident. <laughs> of course it was, yeah. OK. Well, John, you're playing to win amalgamation, £7,000. Daphne, Chris, Barry, Pat and Judith, you're playing for something which money can't buy. The Egghead's reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. John, the question is, is your one brain better than the Egghead's five? And John, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please, Dermot. Good luck, John, and here's your first question. The medical term palpate means to examine an area of the body using which of the senses, touch, smell or sight. The medical term palpate means to examine an area of the body using which of the senses? P-A-L-P-A-T-E. Well, you get palpitations of the heart, which is you can feel the palpitations of the heart, so I'll go for touch, Dermot. OK, for palpitations, and that's the route. It's the right answer. Yes, well done. Touch. Eckheads, for what does the letter I stand in IRS, the American equivalent of HM Revenue and Customs? Independent, inspectorate, or internal? Internal, or will some think it's infernal? Mm. <laughs> internal. <laughs> it's internal. Going for internal, and what do you know what the RS is? Revenue service. Service. IRS, certainly internal for the I. So you've got that. Back to you, John. In which county is the English heritage property of Pevensey Castle, East Sussex, Kent, or Essex? In which county is the English heritage property of Pevensey Castle? I have been there, ah. and I can't remember, because I was very young, around about 55 years ago. But I think we were staying somewhere down near Hastings, which is Sussex direction, so I'll say East Sussex. OK, childhood memory then. Of it was. Trip round Pevensey Castle. I think you were staying down near Hastings, that's led you to East Sussex, and the right answer. Well done, John. Well, eggheads, which Greek letter describes the slowest electrical brain waves in humans? Omega, delta or sigma? Which Greek letter describes the slowest electrical brain waves in humans? Well, I guess the delta waves, because there's it's definitely it's alpha and beta waves. And yeah. yeah, I think it is delta, because delta is the mm -hmm. when you're completely asleep. asleep. So yeah. what we're suffering from at the moment, yeah. delta waves. <laughs> I would say it was delta. Yeah. Delta? Yes. I think it's delta. Okay, Dermot, we're going for delta. It is delta. It's the right answer. Yes, so it's two all. Good stuff, John. Two out of two for you. Get this third one and good things may happen. Who knows? <laughs> what in ancient Roman times was a quincunx? A coin, a water fountain or a tavern? I'll spell it for you. Q-U-I-N-C-U-N-X. Was it a coin, a water fountain, or a tavern? Well, I've never heard of it. Really haven't. And there's nothing that I can sort of logically hang it on to. So I'm going to discount tavern. I'm going to go for water fountain, Dermot. OK, a water fountain for a quincunx. Is it eggheads? I thought it was a coin. Hmm. It's a coin, John, not a water fountain. So a chance for the eggheads. Which novel by Ernest Hemingway is about the tragic romance between a soldier called Frederick Henry and a nurse called Catherine Barclay? Is it For Whom the Bell Tolls, A Farewell to Arms, or The Sun Also Rises? Which novel by Ernest Hemingway is about the tragic romance between a soldier called Frederick Henry and a nurse called Catherine Barclay? Farewell to arms. Farewell to arms. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Oh, ambulance driver. That's a farewell to arms. Yeah. Farewell to arms. Is the correct answer, Eggheads? You've won. Farewell to arms there means we bid farewell to you, John. After a gallant effort there on your own, always tricky uh, in that final round.